so the so this idea that number one an old idea could be possible today that wasn't possible previously makes sense to me Mm -hmm. the idea number two that no one in the current chain is going to do it also makes sense to me and this idea that if you're going to do it actually you're you you need to not just make a lithography machine but be a foundry also makes sense because so you say that makes sense i'm very curious because that's where i found myself raising an eyebrow um and james pound he explained it to you but i mean substrate they're not Uh, only proud yes james proud excuse me uh they are not only trying to disrupt asml but also tsmc that seems very ambitious and everybody who's (laughs) tried to displace either one of those companies has failed over the last 20 years so why? Why are they building a foundry in addition to this lithography tool? Well, if the key step, this is where I go back to that that TSMC and ASML hand in hand partnership. You you the entire sort of process has been optimized around this central step mm-hmm. of, of the lithography. It's the most expensive piece, it's the most complex piece, it requires the most precision, and everything sort of fits in around that. If you're going to replace that. It makes sense you actually have to rework the whole process, even if most of the steps are still the same. Now, those steps, you can buy the equipment. It's not like they're going to reinvent etching machines or matching machines or doping machines or all these sorts of bits and pieces. But we already know the makers of these machines are happy enough to sell to whoever. The whole point is they're selling to China. You're using a lot of the same machines for trailing edge chips as you are for leading edge. Like etching is going to happen at 28 nanometers or 14 nanometers or two nanometers same yeah. thing w- w- with a lot of these you know the 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 chemical coatings all the all these parts so it's not that they're going to reinvent every step but if the key step is completely new the way all that other stuff integrates into the process it makes sense it would need to be reworked and tsmc and asml it's kind of like windows and intel to an extent it's sort of this hand-in-hand partnership that makes this all work and if you're tearing out one piece you probably can't just drop it into tsmc and Mm -hmm. if you're an intel you're even if you're behind all your expertise is still on the old way of doing things are you going to completely rework this it makes sense you sort of have to start from first principles yeah it's also totally insane right like (laughs) like and the chances of success Seem number one, does the x-ray lithography even actually work? Did all these problems actually be overcome? It'd be nice to see more evidence than we got, just to be totally honest. Mm-hmm. And number two, is are you biting off more than you can chew, right? Like, it, on one hand, it makes sense that a Teal fellow who's most well known for creating a sleep tracker, it would take someone totally you on the outside that's kind of crazy to yeah. do this. On the other hand, it's like, this is the guy... <laughs> That's going to do this, right? Uh, Well, I will say for the record, James Proud was pretty honest about it. And he recounted conversations with investors and said, there's a 1% chance this will succeed, but I'm going to operate with a 100% conviction and that that it can't fail. Um, And he said, maybe the percentages have gone up a little bit since then, as some of the technology breakthroughs have come through. Um, But by the same token, I found him more credible by his free acknowledgement of how long the odds are for any of this to work. For sure. And it's sort of, but just, so why talk to him now? I mean, there's an, and I was kind of pressed, like what, what, what's, why why are you discussing it? He's like, well, it's not going to be secret for much longer anyway. Mm -hmm. There's also a bit where I'm sure they're going to be raising money soon. I'm sure this is tied to it. Was Shachekery basically used as a vehicle to help them raise money? Probably like, um, but number one, I'm certainly cheering for him. Uh, yeah. That's, you know, I, I want to see that succeed. Not only but that, n- but on the last episode, when you were talking about potential breakthroughs in the way we make chips, I recall thinking on this end of the line, like, I mean, yeah, it's great to want things. I don't know why you would ever mention that because it, it, for me, it's a good reminder that like, the technology we have today is not fixed and it's easy to re- it's easy to forget that all of this can evolve and has when you look at the history of technology over the last 40 or 50 years and it does make sense that the tech will be in a different place 10 or 15 years from now or at least could be it does and a topic we've come back to a couple times o- over the last few months is 
it's so fascinating to be in a bubble. Like I was, you know, I was aware of the bubble in the nineties. I wasn't working in tech. Uh, you know, I was consuming lots of stuff that was coming from, from the bubble, uh, you know, often to my financial benefit, cause all these people were insane. Mm -hmm. uh, but to actually feel the dynamics internally bubbles, we intrinsically, I think, attribute a negative connotation to them. Like you feel like it, you feel this as an analyst, like, should, like, should I write about this knowing that it could pop tomorrow and then you look like a dummy because you supported stuff and then it blew up, even if you know intellectually this will pay off in the long run, right? Like yeah. I was just talking to John on Dithering, you know, your pets.com. Chewy exists today. It also took 20 years and a massive recession and a total, total dead, you know, a uh, cold frost ice age in tech. And, you know, it, and everyone bubble is viewed negatively. And, there is the theoretical construct, the Carlota Perez construct of bu productive bubbles. And, and we, we've also talked about this. What is going to be the productive payoff from this bubble? Ideally, it's power generation. Like we actually spend tons of money on power generation. All the investment that goes into it ends up being kaput and people go bankrupt. But hey, we have like power plants that run for 50 years or 100 mm -hmm. years or whatever it might be. And that is going to be a positive effect, right? The railroad tracks were a huge benefit, even though everyone building the railroad tracks went bankrupt. My beautiful fiber probably at some point is touching some dark fiber that was late in the late 1990s, <laughs> and it's amazing, and it's great. We have a great video podcast, right? I appreciate WorldCom and everyone else that went bankrupt uh, sort of back in the day. Yep. What is that going to be to be today? Like, you have the, the, the GPUs that aren't going to last for 50 years, right? Mm -hmm. and, and how are we going to get sort of the productive angle? This is where I, I keep coming back to burn Harbert's hobart's book which was also about bubbles he called it boom and we discussed it i we had an interview with him we'll put a link in the show notes what i got from the book originally but i didn't feel until really recently is one of his points is the function of a bubble isn't just this infrastructure investment it's coordinated creation coordination innovation coordinated invention yeah basically you have a lot of people working on a lot of hard problems all at the same time a lot of those sort of the ones that succeed are going to pay off the other ones like everyone's sort of really dependent on everyone else also inventing things at the same time and you have this week you you have this discussion of this creation you also have all these tech company earnings where they're like yeah, you thought we were spending a lot last year? <laughs> Full speed ahead. We're spending even more. And that spending, a lot of it's going to NVIDIA. NVIDIA, that, some of that money is going to TSMC. A lot of that money TSMC is going to ASML. And there's so much money coming in that it is suddenly making someone like Proud and Substrate see, yeah. why not? Yeah, it might be a 1% chance but the payoff of that 1% is getting so astronomically large that here's all the money you need to sort of do it. You have that this new chip that was just announced this week about this, this, this thermodynamic chip where you, you excite the chip according to a probability distribution that you want as it sort of decays and goes back to a uh, neutral energy level. Mm -hmm. It's actually doing computation according to a probability curve that you sort of set it to, and you can do things like image generation, at least in theory, like 10,000 times more efficiently than you can on chips. And you think about it. I've talked about the idea that our chips today, even GPUs, they're one and zeros. They're binary computers. And it's kind of weird we're using binary deterministic computing for probabilistic outputs, which is what sort of AI is. The idea in theory that you'll have a probabilistic chip that actually uses natural forces, uses mm -hmm. thermodynamics to do computation, of course, that's going to be dramatically more efficient. Of course, that could align with probabilistic computing to have a probabilistic decay in this chip that is actually doing your computation. Also sounds totally insane. <laughs> Who's going to actually spend the money and to do this? In a normal period, no one is. Yeah. In a bubble, when companies are spending 
tens of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars. You have all this crazy thing going wrong. Suddenly, all this insanity seems more viable. And yes. So it pulls the investments forward. It makes the it, opportunities it coordinates clear the to everybody. You have all yeah. this stuff happening at the same time. And man, Byrne really nailed it with this insight. And And we embrace the bubble right mm -hmm. like this is why i don't feel bad talking to james and is it going to work out and do have i pushed him sufficiently on the tech or should he share more probably all this is true but it, is this all going to blow up where at some point we're going to say wow we got a little crazy then yes is the future going to depend on what emerges from the rubble that would have never emerged otherwise if there if that didn't also, almost certainly, yes. yes. And yeah. it's really hard to write about and to analyze because as an analyst, you want to be sure. You want mm -hmm. to have clarity. You what you want to be able to follow logic. And it's kind of like, sorry, I, I hope you're doing a good job listening. In my I'm listening. Don't worry. As I'm rambling. <laughs> I'm but no, I've just, I've just been thinking so much about this. It's kind of like doing probabilistic computing on top of deterministic chips it it, it it's kind of weird yeah. and a little uncomfortable there is a bit where i want to be a deterministic analyst that follows a logic chain a to b to c to d to e mm -hmm. i had the pleasure of doing that for the first decade of stratechery actually it, I, a lot of the job felt very easy because i felt i could see very clearly what was happening i just needed to articulate it i could do a daily update about Microsoft earnings or Google earnings brought yeah. very clearly to the dynamics of aggregation theory and all these sorts of pieces. Welcome and to the nonlinear future, Ben. Here we yes. are. No, <laughs> Who exactly. knows what direction it'll go? I feel like I'm, I'm trying to do, there's going to be a challenge in doing deterministic analysis on top of probabilistic outcomes. We're in a probabilistic world, not just in terms of AI, but in terms of the expected value of what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Is James Proud going to figure this out? I don't know. Is someone yeah. else going to recreate the chip fabrication process? I don't know. Is it important and valuable that someone's trying to do it? Absolutely. Would the funding and the desire to do it exist without the mania that we're in? Probably not. And yeah. that's super important, valuable, I mean, it's and unbelievable. it's pretty crazy to be a part of. A premise of our chip conversations for the last two and a half years, specifically the Intel conversations, one of the premises in that conversation is that it's just not economical for anybody in the U.S. to try starting a foundry today. It yeah. would be insane. It's not going to happen. Yeah, it takes so long to move down the learning curve that in the meantime, you're going to go bankrupt a hundred times over because China's making chips, mm -hmm. TSMC's making chips, you have old global foundries. You, like, you can't just jump to two nanometer with the current processes you need. We talk about this with China, right? Right. They're going to, to move down the curve because of the chip controls gives them a motivation to be super uneconomical. In a world of no chip controls, nothing happens. TSMC just kind of rules the roost forever leading edge yeah R right and, and and because again why would you buy from anywhere else and that's why number one the chip controls is actually a big forcing function and china probably is working on stuff like this as well i'm sure they are looking at whatever working tirelessly. substrate is looking yeah. at with a high degree of interest to say the least like i when I, I i'm like what's your security situation like it better be very high <laughs> um yep. the the uh so that is certainly but Leaving aside the geopolitical points and the, you know, global competition aspects, the fact of the matter is we have way more investment going into this space than we would normally. In this yeah. case, it's because of political considerations. The point of the bubble is because of the mania, because there's so much money at stake, because everyone is pushing in the same direction, that also is sort of insane. And I appreciated Proud being like, this. we're an ideological company. We think the U.S. should win. And you mm -hmm. look at that, it's like, well, can you? Can we have like a technical reason why you're going to win? Like, like, like why this should be a thing? But that doesn't sound that much different than the AI companies thinking they're inventing God. Yeah. And it's like, you guys are religious about this. 
And it's like, yes, they're religious about this. That's why they're spending crazy amounts of money with the belief that there's going to be AI takeoff. There is going to be AI that sort of dominates the world. Mm -hmm. And you need religious fervor to do to break through to, to break push out yeah to like trajectory was easy for the first decade because the tech industry was in stasis because we were just co you know coalescing around these big five tech companies who were in their lane did what they did and it got a little boring right 20, yeah. like i thought about w when's the end in 2020 2021 just because it's like I don't want to write about what antitrust lawsuits for the rest of my life. Right? <laughs> yeah, like, totally. And so, yeah, so I'm getting what I wanted for good and hard. It makes my job much more difficult. <laughs> Your but brain is... is melting on a weekly basis, but it is very, very exciting. And static is a good word for what, um, what the ecosystem can look like when you look around at trillion dollar companies that are firmly entrenched. And then you remember that there's always more to this story and the future tends to be non-linear and more complicated than one might expect. Right. It's precisely because TSMC is so dominant that you feel like a company like Substrate has a chance just yeah. because you can see how TSMC is not going to respond to this. I'm sure they're looking on with interest and you know, if they ever get asked about it, they'll say mumble something or, or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. There's no way they can even explore or think about this because they're so large so pot committed to the current thing that's going on and so dominant in the space. It's like, Oh yeah, actually that, that actually makes it more viable for something completely new to come along because if, if there's not going to be a response yeah. and um, so again, I'm not making any pronouncements on the viability, how, if it's going to happen, what it's going to work. I think it's exciting that it's happening and all this stuff ties together. Right, the big tech company spending the 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 so the cost of these machines and these crazy moonshots that suddenly, again, if it, a one percent expected return, that overall number, if it succeeds, has to be really really large, and yeah. we're getting to the point of those numbers being really really large. Yep, 